Uh, very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sorry, I cannot be in Vienna in person. Uh, I know, you know, in the last two and a half years, it's very kind of boring for Zoom meeting. Uh, anyway, so I do my best. I want to show you something our latest development on artificial sense technology. What we are doing on mimic biological sense and also we want to go beyond the biological sense in a way. So we all, everyone know already in a biological sense, we have typically five traditional sense, sight, touch, sound, taste, and smell. So from engineer angle, in fact, all these five sense is kind of a sensor plus memory. So for example, for the sight, it's kind of a photo reception. So the way how we can plus the photo device with a memory device, how it could happen. And also you also hear about so-called sixth sense. So this refers ability to something is not ability to perceive and something is not there. But in fact, this is not physical sense in a way. Okay, so how does the sex sense come from? It's based on the typical five traditional sense and then getting data, do the scan data, analyzing, sorting, and the feedback in a way which reach people so-called sixth sense. Even some people are called sixth sense. So this is something of course, a very kind of interesting area. People are really working at it. But before I look at this kind of sixth sense of now they talk about the metal wars, very, very important. We need to address how many fundamental questions. In one part, in biological people are interested to understand how this kind of five sense really happen in a molecule scale level. For engineer angle, we are interested in how we really meet me such five sense and we go beyond. So this is something topic I'm going to mention today in the area of artificial sense. So artificial sense is kind of very broad area. So it cover from material science way, we understand and develop materials with ability to have a sensing capability in a way leaching device and then functional systems. So this is something very broad in this field. Which such kind of artificial sense development, it will offer ability to for healthcare monitoring, prosthetics, social robotic development, even beyond. In fact, one example, I believe many people in this conference hear a lot about this electronic skin development. So this is something about a huge development progress in the last 15 years, pioneered by John Rogers from Northwestern, John Bao from Stanford, and Takao from Tokyo. So all these people did a lot of this kind of develop from materials and go how we can we this kind of mimic this kind of scheme capability to sense and then in system level to miscommunicate very second layer skin. It really can put on skin to really feel sense. And then people can do this kind of incorporate this kind of robotics, have ability with allow robotics like a human sense. So this is something you can see many examples already daily and also time to time, you can see paper published in Nature and Science, a lot of breakthrough as well, right? And for us, definitely, we are also interested in this direction, but we are trying to look in different perspective. So today I'll give you two examples, how we consider this artificial sense in a way, how we can mimic the biological sense, and then we extend biological sense. This, uh, I believe, is more people interested. So I'll give you two kind of ideas we are doing here. First one, emulating haptics for rapid mechanical quantification. So for humans, we can perceive a softness. Okay, you can see for a risk of fruit, you want to determine fruit ripeness, it's, it's time to read it or not, or time to time you want to determine this kind of air condition of the tie, even in a clinical angle to do this kind of palpations. But all this kind of food stuff, nowadays really kind of subjective perception. It just tell you about soft rigid, but can I give it in quantified information as much as possible? Yeah, because this is something the nature behave. In materials angle, we look another way, okay? Because we want materials will also be accurate as possible, right? For example, you want to determine materials, how soft it is. Here, people typically use this kind of like tensor machine to match the answer modules, or nail in data as well. Even a common in the lab, in materials lab, also to so-called this kind of dynamic mechanical analyzer. It's really often for this kind of answer modules measurements. But however, all these three equipments, obviously, one problem is very big, right? So this is always in meter scale, two meter height. 
expensive, more than 40,000 US dollar. And also each mission is time consuming, more than 10 minutes. It's not like human, one have in, instantaneously feeling what, how it's come from the modules, dance modules left. And also most of the case is kind of sample, is invasive sample operation. So that's why limit a lot of scenarios. So that's why people are really thinking of questions. How for human is that this one touch, feel the softness. In the meantime, give you quantified value in a way, give you value, value of this kind of flow, young modules as possible. So in the last few, two years, we want, two years ago, we come out with an idea, but we listed something one based on this kind of Hertz contact mode. This is a well known principle used for atomic force microscope development already. So this way, so this is something when people have done very a lot of this kind of flow, yes, modules based on this kind of first model, right? So for this first model, when you tip contact with our samples, okay, and then have start having interaction immediately, have some contact force with displacement. And then in the end, from there, we can really tell you the Young's modules there. But so for such Young's first model, the problem is there are two kind of variables here. First one, contact force is not displacement. It's not linear relationship. So we, like Hertz model, but we don't, can we make it simple? Change from two variables into one. It means only one force dependent, for example, or in the end, force independent is possible, right? So this is something we come out with the direction. So this is something we call lock. Okay, here's kind of haptic self-locking measurements. In a way, we still use this kind of force in collective tip here. But here we're adding another kind of elements here, we call self-locking elements. For this self like it means once tip reaches sample in certain depths already, and then because of friction between this conflict, this kind of locking element with this tip, and then stop the tip movement. This one, how to how we can we know this kind of can stop that? Now, of course, we have strength sensors here to really monitoring the deformation or this kind of depth, this kind of how depth the tip goes inside already. So this is using this kind of stretch, stretchable strength sensor to monitor it. At the end, we can get one measurement so force independence because we don't want have this kind of force dependent. Because okay, so force dependent means you don't know, it depends on force, you could have a different kind of Young's module. This is something one is problem there, right? So that's why we use this one trans transfer the touching force into friction just by self-locking elements here. So you can see here, reaching a certain angle, this tip will not move anymore. Regarding how much touch force you, you really want to apply on top, it's independence at the end, you will get this kind of working plot here. At the beginning, you increase the touch force, okay? So the, you will, the, this kind of deformation increase and reaching certain scenario already will not force dependent anymore. So the way, regardless how much force applied, the Young's module will be, the measurement out will be one value left. So this is basically our self-locking elements left. Okay, how this, this is something we have to it's very simple approach we hear. So this is something we use a 3D printing approach a method. So if you top bottom and top, you can use this kind of upper cap and also bottom one you can 3D printing out. It's kind of a structure there. The most most important have the PDMS. This is a strength sense here. The strength here we use this kind of PDMS carbon tube. So this is something one is well developed already as a strength sensor. And in fact, in my group, they always use the PDMS carbon tube as kind of strength sensor as already to determine the deformation of the substrate, you, you're going to measure it. And for other parts, you know, all 3D printing, and then it will look like this kind of structure, okay? This is all 3D printing, it's like really like a tip. You can really put code on your, on this kind of finger, and then you can really touch the sample you want to measure. So that's why we're here we called fingertip modular sensors, okay? It's kind of 3D dimensional structures. And then of course, here you, you can make this kind of, this is straight, the, the finger model sensor here, and then we can have a full wireless measuring systems, allow you to do this kind of uh, data capturing immediately and also do the feedback sensing and so on. So this is a whole wireless systems as well. The sensor itself is pretty small. Okay, it's a very miniaturized size, very lightweight. And also now it's a simply wireless connections. Now it can really give you kind of rapid readout of this kind of force, force or this is kind of for Young's module you can read, you can reach it. It's independent touch force you can have. So this is data how it looks like. So typically without self-locking, it will be like this one, this right side, this per, per, per graph. For this per graph, you can see 
for PDMS in different kind of small, young small deals or ecoflex. This is something where you can extend the sample you can patch already. Now you can see without a self element, you self locking elements, you can see without, you will apply the force, the force will be keep it to increase. So it means it's for, force dependent. We don't want, we don't like. And then from left side, we adding with this kind of self lock element. Now you can see this is something of force independent. So this is something one allow you to measure this kind of samples. Okay. And then the beautiful of this work is you really increase accuracy. The one commit with our uh, stable, standard measurements. You can see without a self locking, with a self locking, with the self locking, the accuracy is significantly improved. It's more than 95% already. If uh, this is something one is kind of, I mean, it's really, really big process as well. The more important part here force independence. It means regarding how much low force or gentle force touch or heavy touch, you can see the gentle touch or heavy touch, the game give you the same value readout. Okay, so they mean they can give a lot of application. Okay, take example, you want to measure skin, right? And then whatever gentle touch, which sample, the readout is same. If you want to measure this kind of skin and small deals, like, regarding the force in the, in the, the substrate, how you, you apply on top. Okay, and then we, Compare with the, this measurement with the gold standard measurement. Okay, here it's called MTS. So you use MTS to compare. You can see, especially in a soft area, less than, um, I mean, about this kind of so called one mega kilopascal, one mega pascal. You can see the value is really, really is kind of stable. It's accuracy about more than 80%. It's a bit pity now, we are, if you go for this kind of hard materials, so it's really more than one mega pascal. Accuracy is a bit lower. So this is something we're still working on it. And this is internal, internal risk of reliability. Now people argue, you now this is how this one can be used. So as the first clinical case, clinical trial case, we used to quantify and to assess the swollen tissues. Why this is important? In fact, in the foot area or angle area, this kind of edema is very, very big issues. People normally will go for this kind of uh, Post surgery, it's about two weeks post surgery, because the skin in this area is not so stretchable compared with other areas. So that's why the doctor, when the doctor do this kind of clinical surgery, they must wait until the, the strong tissue go back to normal. The clin current clinical justification judgment based on the observation. For example, if your the skin is very shiny, it means not ready. Or the doctor will go to this kind of pinch the skin or to see the wind clinical there. So this is the usually people will do it. Now we propose another idea. We use our, this kind of lock sensors, okay? This kind of uh, finger, this kind of sensors that can give you the quantified information, how this kind of strong tissue, the, the, young, the magnetic properties, the strong tissue. Is there. So this is the idea that we, we come out. And then we can really make this kind of sensors fully wearable, okay? Because this is our kind of, uh, finger model sensors here, and you can wireless con you can connect with this kind of systems here. This is can include a Bluetooth, include a country units. Also, you have this kind of mini power bank there. A lot of these wearable devices there already. Now you can touch the area you want to determine. You can determine the young small deal or particular samples there. Okay, so let, let me show the more how it works. Okay, so you can see this more, okay. Now this is the one subject, okay? Subject is the left, left foot has kind of the bone fracture. So that's why have a strong tissues there. And his right foot is normal. So that's why it's used our control experiments. So, so for the swan tissue, you can see the Young's module is more than 300 kilopascal. So this is because it's kind of the fracture. Length. And the normal one is about, is 10 makes it different lower. So about 35 right area. So this is something one. Then we can do the daily measurement different day measurements. Okay, we can do the day one, day two, day three. So this name, because our, is force independent. So that's why our measurements is really constant. Okay, it's related whether well these samples on different person to measure the same. And also that I'm time independence because in different time, maybe you apply different force to measure, to read out the swollen tissue. But for us, because we are force independent. So that's why in one day you will be the strong force in another day you'll be the leg weak force. But the readout is still constant there. So that's why I can see we can do the continuously, non continuously, but long time measurements to read out the, the young small deal or the mechanical properties of the tissue you want to achieve it. And then you can see for healthy tissue one is keep constant. Okay, it's a very kind of stable. 
but for the swan tissue, you can see the slowly decay by daily because this sample one means the patients or the subjects under recovery now. It's allowed for surgery. So that's why this is data how it looks like. Swollen tissue is healthy tissue. You can see the doctor from observation, five days allow for this kind of clinical this kind of surgery already. And then for us, I can see our data also here, after five days, pretty stable, saturated already. So this is something one, it's a kind of fully mobile kind of module sensors enable this kind of flow for human, for this kind of per patient skill. And then in fact, we have more, more experiment on going on now to, for this one to use for this kind of flow, clinical case applications. And the, because we also, once we also want to modify it, in, this is still kind of a bit kind of bucky. Now we have one device we're working on, it's called pen-like structure. Okay, it's kind of like a pen, okay? You can read really deep the position you want to measure, can read all these kind of Young's modules there. Okay, so this is beautiful, all this fish member. And the advancement compared with the, the current, current, current clinical practice is fast response in seconds, also kind of quantified data and also mobile remote. Okay, this is some of the improvements. And this data, if you compare with the color one, people use for this kind of like mechanical measurements. And then compare with kind of a static one, this is color in a, in, a, in a lab, you can typically use it, but we have a very good advantage in the cost. Our sensor, because it's fully 3D printing, that parts and also sensor elements using this kind of PDMS carbon tube is also very cheap. Okay, Minima, minimize frequency variable systems. And the measurement in terms of timing, we less than one, I mean, really on touch in, second, in, in seconds, but you know, typical one in the kind of minutes. And also a lot of cases have this kind of um, sample damage, but we do have a sample damage. And the cost also we are much, much lower. So this is something one you, you beautiful of this work in the way to this kind of young modules there. And one more development we're also doing recently, you know, go beyond, right? Because the one is only one, one point. Now we can really go for multiple points. So this is something one we can fully hang go session already. Each black here is one kind of for pressure sensors there, for haptic sensors there. And then now you can really put on your hands where right you can, for this one is our students in you know, the shake hands with the another people's. And then you can see the force have changed there already. So this is something one, more and more things can come out. For example, right, in one day, you know, this one can use for this kind of metal words and we are on the way as well. Okay, so this is give you example in the way you can do this kind of flow fast, read out of this kind of flow and haptically into the force information. Now let me give you another, maybe about another, another, another about five minutes to show you another example we are doing in my lab is extended human sense. We, we daily we hear a lot of examples, right? This is something one device, you know, keep, can really uh, affect what I'm trying to can read our skin and you can, you can even do the implantable device. But this is something one is really helpful as well. But we often we, meet, we miss another components in our life is in fact, the plants is, also one of the very important subject, but few of our us we study on top on top. And that's why we are our curiosity whether we can really you know develop this kind of sensing or device device capability to communicate with the plants. So this is something the idea we come out from there. And how people communicate with plants, in fact, can be by electrical signal as well, like a neural like, like a neural system. Okay. So you can see for environmental, you can see whether it's a flat trap or this kind of like people and so on. Well, then you touch it, it close, right? You have this kind of response there. And then plant itself, and also this kind of action potential generation. So this is something one, if you put your electro inside, you can read it. Not this kind of mechanical response. Also the chemical stress, temperature stress, light stress, and so on. All these kind of different kind of um, external stimuli can lead in this kind of like, so-called plant electrophysiology signal generation. In a way, can reflect to this kind of local and kind of in the also even system response. This is something one less plus people get get, get away before, in way, especially in the flexible electronics area. But of course, in here, the electro is a very essential component. Okay, so this is, but typically in the last few years, in, in last, it's been half a century in already, you know, people typically use this kind of invasive electrodes like this kind of like micro electrodes really embed inside, okay, to lead out this kind of like 
electrical signal. So this is the typical people have done already. And, and also another, sorry. Okay. And then also in, in other areas about it's kind of the silver, silver, white electrodes. So this is something also people use a lot already. But again, few questions, because this is kind of full of very easy to peel off. And also if you this kind of silver argo, argo electrodes, it's very easy to peel off. And also easy to get dried if you just put on the leaf surface. So this is something one, all the situation leave the complicated problem for this kind of for pants layer. Okay, so my group have one development in the in, in last few years, we have developed some so-called conformal electrodes for plant monitoring. So the idea concept here is you, you can, of course, this is something learned from this kind of people develop electrodes for east for the skin, but same case for leaf also same, right? You can have this kind of a transparent, this kind of electrodes. And also you can make this kind of blessable. It means you create polar structure on top. And the second, the third one also you can, do this kind of adhesive because leaf surface have a lot of issues, not any I mean, simple, difficult issue compared with kind of the skin, for example, and leaf has kind of different kind of surface properties. And also leaf surface have this kind of hairy seed, have this kind of topographic. So that's why easy peel off. So that's why we learn from this kind of hydrogel, we make this kind of adhesive hydrogel and then ensure the, the, the electro is very sticky on top and then we borrow the idea from like from Takosomia, they like make this kind of gold nano mesh. We also can go make the gold nano mesh and stick on this kind of electrode surface, on this kind of leaf surface layer. Okay, as a proof of concept, we use this kind of flat trap. Why flat trap is interesting? Because flat trap is well known already. So once it's typically is on open status, but once they have too mechanically touch and then flat trap close, and then we come up ideas, well as possible, not use this kind of electrical stimulant, it's not mechanical stimulant. We use the electrical stimulant. One electrical is used to stimulate, another one used to monitoring to really trick this kind of close or this kind of fracture. This is our idea come, come out. So how it work? Okay, so this is something like the gold nano mesh KDMS. It's transparent, so allow, make sure this kind of photosynthesis is still going on and can for long-term measurement. So this is something when we're running for this kind of more than one week, still will not change any kind of properties of the plant itself. And because we make this kind of flow transparent, also this kind of breastbone, this is something also very, very important and also conductive. And then for a flat trap, you know, our interest of observation is this one. Okay, this is the flat trap for left sides. And then the important is, you know, we understand the mechanical touch leading the generation of action potential. You can see the first touch here, mechanical touch here, and then it generate the first action potential. But this first action potential didn't need a close off a flat trap until you touch a second time and then have another action potential generation and then the flat trap will close. So this is something one um, during our study, we are really interested in observation, okay? It must have two mechanical touch. And also these two mechanical touch have some kind of certain kind of time period. For example, this experiment, zero second first touch, 68, another, 68 second, another touch. This fracture will not close. We understand it has some kind of time period. If too fast, also not, you can see zero second, two point three second touch, continue touch. This also not close. They have certain time periods. I mean, for us, we find it's about this kind of two seconds above and then you can really lead this kind of close of this kind of fracture. So this is something one we understand. And nature why? Because, in naturally, flat trap is able to really capture this kind of insects, right? If you too mechanical touch too quickly, you cannot capture insects. So let's just love nature, the beautiful there. So let's just set something to one, how you need it. Now we make this system use the electrical moderation. So how it means? So this is two electrodes. This is the electrode to apply voltage. This is electrode to sense the action potentials. Because we know already you have two mechanical stimulation to lead in two action potentials. Now we artificially generate use our electrode to generate two action potential. Okay, so this is here. Artificially to generate two action potential, first action potential, second action potential, and leading the close of this kind of fracture. This is ideally. Of course, Q parameter we have to adjust. The first one, wattage. Okay, you must over to about 5.5 watts. 
And the time difference between is about 1.5 times, 1.5 seconds in our case for this one. And then we can really make this kind of system, full system ready to be used. Okay, then of course there are more data I don't show here, just show you how this system works, okay? Now, because we can use the electrical to moderate file chat. Now this electrical part, we can connect with the Wi-Fi. Then we can connect with this kind of smartphone as well. Then the end, you look like a smartphone to close the flat chip, to control the flat chip close, you know, by like, like in this case. Okay, the way, let me show the movie how it works. Okay. So this is the movie, so it, it's really on-demand electrical photo actuator. Okay, so the flat chip, then we can touch this kind of like, um, mm, mm, smartphone layer, but each touch it, yeah, generate two action potential. Okay, I must remember each action, each touch is generate action, two action potentials. Like this one also is used to control this kind of, um, to pick the needles. This one used to, con to pick this kind of the moving objects. Because we understand we can read, read right hand to close it. So that's why regardless how fast, how slow it moves up to the subject, don't worry, no object, don't worry. We really can control it. Okay, the reach here, I need to close it. So this is something, whatever, how fast, how slow we can do it. So this is something I would say the first, kind of one of the early first example to tell you how we can use this kind of the sensors to not to commit with the, communicate with the planets and so on, more, more things we are ongoing on that. Okay, in short, so today I'll give you two examples in, in this kind of artificial sense technology, how we can really emulate in biological sense and also really go beyond the biological sense in the way we extend our human capabilities. In fact, there are more and more work we are ongoing on now, but our basic concept is we want to change it from this kind of from the biological sense is more subject like cognition. We go for object evaluation. Biological go for quanti quantitative perception. We go for quantitative detection. The last one, in terms of kind of feedback is more like a self consciousness, but we go for this kind of intelligent feedback. And of course, there are more and more things we, we can do it in this direction. Finally, thanks for my students and also thanks for our funding agencies and also our company collaborators and also my a lot of this kind of collaborative, a lot of support in the last few years. Thank you for your attention. And stay healthy, stay connected. I'll be happy to answer any question you have. Yeah, thank you very much.